All right, so this is our third year hosting City of the Future with CPS Energy. And it started because we wanted to showcase the city of San Antonio, all the great things that they're doing, as well as other cities around the country and the world. And not just talk about what people are doing, but bring people together um, to learn from each other and create new partnerships. Um, last year in late February, we were together physically in San Antonio. We were fist bumping and using hand sanitizer and really CPS Energy employees were the first people I had been around who were taking the news about COVID-19 seriously. Um, I actually left San Antonio after the event, flew to Florida, and then got on a cruise ship for three nights, which in hindsight was probably not, not the best idea. Um, it was just about a week after that that the whole country went into lockdown. So since then, there's been a lot of pain for people, a lot of stress, a lot of reflection and learning. So while City of the Future is about looking forward, we don't want to ignore the present reality or the past. So today and throughout our monthly series, we'll look towards creating a sustainable and equitable future through that lens of applying lessons learned. So with that, please join me in welcoming Z Prime CEO Jason Rodriguez and CPS Energy President and CEO Paula Gold Williams um, as they discuss CPS Energy's experience with Winter Storm Yuri. So Jason, I will pass it over to you. Thank, thank you, Aaron, and thank you everyone for being here again today. Welcome to See the Future 2021. Uh, this is the third City of the Future. We're very excited to launch it and kick it off today. And I'm very proud and, and excited to have uh, Paula Go Williams, the president and CEO of CPS Energy here with me to talk about lessons learned from the Texas storm. Hey Paula, how are you? I am good. Sorry about that. I went, I went flying around the internet somehow and it, and it kicked me out. <laughs> so I'm, I'm on my iPad. It's a little bit different setup, but glad to be here. It looks, it looks great. Great to see you. <laughs> um, and great to have you here and see the future again. Thank you so much for the partnership. And, um, wow. I guess the only, the only part about that is I wanted to open up with, uh, to see your friends, uh, the baby Yoda Grokus, because that was the real conversation well, I was to have. Well, so. I, I will move. I, you can barely see them, but they're they're in a stereo, so to speak, a small one and a big one. I have a collection of Grogu uh, and uh, really, really into him. So anyway, yes, he, he is there uh, slightly to the side. All right. Oh, I see. Yeah, it looks like he's just listening in very quietly. But, listening uh, in very quietly. It doesn't, no, a few words, no, hardly any. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> lots of nods and grunts, I'm sure. Just like my kids, for sure. Yeah, yes, um, yes. <laughs> well, well, Paula, thank you so much. And thank you for taking some time to talk about uh, CPS journey during the storm and your journey during the storm. Uh, obviously, the nation's watching Texas and watching everything that's unfolded here. It's, the storm has impacted global energy markets, as you guys are well known. And, and it's actually going to change how energy markets work. And so... Uh, we're very excited that you know CPS Energy is out there in front, kind of leading that charge and and speaking on behalf of the community in a very on a topic that's very hard to explain, um, and this is something that doesn't that can't fit into a thirty second soundbite. So it's also very difficult and challenging. Uh, so we we've, we've admired the way the city of San Antonio, you and your team have have done uh, a brilliant job of trying their best to to bring the community along on a topic that is just very difficult at times to explain. So to kick this off, you know, I just wanted to ask, you know, what has been this customer journey since the storm hit? Um, and how do we earn back some of that trust that, that the community was got, got caught up in there? So I'll start with that. Well, um, thank you. Um, I spend uh, <clears throat> so much of my day uh, you know, thinking about the recovery that we are living and thinking about how, how are we really going to practically um, get through this. I do want to provide some context that, you know, before the storm, um, the biggest thing that we really talked about, and it's still a live issue, is decarbonization and effectively transitioning to um, less emitting, to non-emitting technology sources. 
And there was a huge you know, conversation about that. We released for the first time our um, resource plan uh, publicly, and we are gonna continue to pick that up and have a conversation about that because uh, we have to move from where we are to the future. And, and there's still a lot of focus about you know, the goals of, of 2050, 2040, 2035, thank you, President Biden, and 2030, you know, where, wherever we can. But I think what happened when we went through URI is it told us that that journey just to 2030 is gonna be extremely, extremely challenging. And um, it, it, it shook our customers because the fragility of uh, you know, systemic issues and errors at the ERCOT level, at the state level, had never really affected um, the average Texan, let alone San Antonian, uh, San Antonians. And, and so really thinking about how complex this business is, how hard it is to keep the power flowing, how, what, when we say a grid, there are merits to having a connected grid that helps all of Texas. And typically, there's if there's bad weather in the north, then you can use the, the stability of the south part of the grid to make everything okay. In this case, when we had uh, the system that came across the state, there was nowhere else to go through. And even as we talk about should there be more interconnection, um, none of the solutions are easy um, all the way. Now, look, I, to, to your point, how do, how do the, the, our customers here in San Antonio feel? I mean, I think they feel um, shaken by the experience uh, emotionally. Even many, many people were affected without power for days. And clearly that was a reliability crisis that we apologize, I apologize for, um, uh, because I know just personally that, that affected people. But there were people who had their power on the whole time. Maybe they were connected to, uh, were close by a hospital or something like that. They didn't have, um, issues, but it would emotionally they worried because their friends and families may not have power. So this was just a big, broad thing. And I would say, Jason, that our goal is to win back the trust and create more understanding and more partnership and knowledge and information um, to everyone. But we got to do it one relationship at a time, one opportunity at a time. This is an opportunity to get um, information out and share and be willing to listen to people's real emotions, concerns, and questions. And my whole team is geared up for that. Great, great. So kind of moving forward a little bit, can you maybe talk a little bit about some of these lessons learned as you guys have looked back on, on that, maybe either from like operational readiness, customer aspect, you just touched on that. And then just the resilience part, you, you made a good point about yeah, CPS, you guys have been out in front with uh, uh, the, the big RFP for advancing uh, more renewables and power uh, there, but what are been those lessons learned across operations and, and resilience? Well, you know, I, I think absolutely we as a utility in Texas, we, you know, we've served this community for 161 years. We, we own and, and value the relationship that we have with every single customer. And so as we look back at the, the events, we definitely believe that the communication landscape is really very complicated and we really got to invest more in that and, and then create uh, preferred avenues to, to contact customers. So what I mean by that is we have, I think over 600,000 um, contact numbers in our system, but they're not all to uh, mobile phones and cellular devices. They're, they're home numbers and they're, and they're maybe old numbers and not even fresh. And so I think we have to really recreate these. What, what does each particular customer want their method of communication to be? We also need to change, you know, we were talking um, days before the storm hit about, you know, how big the system was, but I don't think we were creating the right awareness that this is, this is a case where um, the intensity of the storm uh, kept growing and growing. But I, I think we've got to be a lot more as, as a society thinking about the unintended that may happen, the, the more extreme um, issues, and then talking a whole lot about everything from, you know, firewood to blankets to to filling up your your uh, your bathtub with water and and talking about how important conservation is for everyone in the community if i can conserve more and handle it with more bundling that's that's a kilowatt hour that that somebody else can get and that ability to share and be cognizant to be part of the process is a, is a big learning and we can do that locally we are um making steps to partner with the city of san antonio our owner the county 
and every other organization around town, businesses, uh, suburban cities, we're, we're having a lot of outreach now talking about how can we create a much better connection about awareness and, and, and knowledge and, and put in our educational systems and making young people understand how important it is to have conservation. Those are the things that we can do that are really important, um, but a ton of work has to happen across the state and in Austin. And we, and we feel very, very comfortable about about being part of that catalyst, about talking to elected officials, and we are, and we're really proud of um, our senators um, uh, that represent our citizens that have been working really hard in Austin trying to change what and how the systems work and how we even communicate from ERCOT to us to customers. It's all got to be about what's the impact to customers. And the last piece I'll say, but there's a ton, I mean, we have a list of things that, of what we're going to do. Um, the last thing I'll say is, we have to actually redesign a system that works better for Texas. It's great that most of the year, what we end up having is very um, low pricing on the average day, but we have to now realize that Texas is a summer and winter peaking state, and we can't let the pricing go straight to $9,000 per megawatt um, because there's tightness in the market but especially when there's a declared disaster. That thinking about scarcity pricing can happen at any time for as long as it needs to cause a huge ramification of what I call the affordability crisis. And that was also coupled with no, no, no borders for natural gas suppliers to think um, that, yeah, let's just let the, the, the system go up in pricing. It didn't necessarily make a significant difference on when the, the supply of natural gas was there. It was broken. And so we have to look at all of the unintended consequences. Because the biggest issue, Jason, I'm going to tell you is it's not just about um, Storm Uri. It's about we know that the circumstances with climate are changing, but it could be a cyber attack. It could be some other thing that causes a crisis in Texas. And we have to come together and work together and help each other as Texans and not take advantage of each other or not be, you know, to flip it and turning, well, you know, some customer is going to pay somewhere. And so that's all going to be okay. And we'll figure it out. The system has to be better than that. So something a natural follow-up to that there, Paul, just comes by is you know, there's the legislature a lot evaluating a lot in the House, the Senate. Are you seeing do you feel hopeful about that, that these are going to move in the right directions, particularly on, on the, the accountability and oversight on, on the natural gas side and then bringing some of those things into maybe the PUC or, or more oversight into how the energy markets run? Uh, and, and, and the second is to follow up to that, if you maybe to, do you think at least where it's at now, a customer is going to come out on top because they're, they're definitely demanding and paying attention to what's going on there. Well, you know, the first thing I want to say is I, th I think our senators and elected officials are trying to work hard. I think I think this, you know, think about it. They had a whole agenda to work on. And, and just with one, you know, not even a full week, that agenda had to change. And for a system, again, that wasn't really at the priority. I don't even know if there was any major le um, legislation proposed for energy. And now that pretty much sucked all the air out of the room and became the priority, I think they did quickly try to, to realize and, and reprioritize their conversations about what went wrong and what needs to be corrected. I do think that it, the more and more people ask about energy solutions, it gets to be daunting. It's very complicated. Um, things typically work um, very, very well. But, but now, again, it was tested because we had the, this, this unexpected event that, that pointed out the vulnerabilities in the system and the design and the protocols, all those things and, and the way the market works. And, and in the, the lack of um, statutes, again, that prevent customers from being manipulated and gouged. So I, the, the, Senate, the uh, Senate and the House had a tremendous amount of work in front of them. And I think and appreciate um, Senator Jose Menendez, and uh, Senator Donna Campbell in particular have really, really spent a lot of time with us and, and um, their peers and colleagues. And I see a lot of great work happening. There is going to be, I think, some meaningful legislation that really helps and starts to think about things. Again, everything from better communication systems, education, weatherization, um, you know, requirements and how to get on top of that and how to, how to uh, build upon those because we need standards, obviously, that are, that are much higher 
than what currently exists today because of the duration of the storm was so long. Um, I do think that, you know, there, there are some challenges when, you know, maybe some elements of when, you know, solar and wind didn't show up in, in, the, in the storm and this whole thing about their, their inability uh, to perform. I'm gonna to continue to say that every single technology had a problem. And I'm also gonna say that solar and wind aren't supposed to be your big producers in the middle of a winter storm. You're, you're right. putting them in place for, for summer need. And so um, while, that's, while that's not the biggest thing, I mean, that's included. So I think it's gonna take a couple of legislative sessions to kind of keep fine tuning what really matters and looking at it. But I think maybe I'm, 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 a, I'm a critic of this, there has been a ton of focus on weatherization um, and the utility industry. Um, we had some problems. We had we had some problems due to weather, but we also had some problems that, that because of the demand was so high, things happen, and you typically have some level of equipment failure. You also have outages because again, you're preparing for a summer peak, not for a winter peak. And so, all that said, during the storm, for the plants we operated, we had an 85 percent, um, you know, availability number. And, and it correlated really high to our, pr our production. But that 15% was critical in terms of not being able to, to provide power. Some of that 15% was because we couldn't get supply of natural gas. And that's, I think, a huge thing that the legislature couldn't get to. Um, you know, there's a big effort about our supply chain and our weatherization. There was hardly no focus on the supply chain of the natural gas suppliers. That is critical. Texas is rich in natural resource and it needs to be the transition fuel. And with the abundance, just like we have to go in and make sure that our availability numbers are high, that's the same thing that needs to be addressed. And I think that was a miss and it looks like it's going to be a miss in this session, but it can't be. We have got to get back to those issues. I am hoping the special session um, that have, has been talked about can get back at those things. I'm sure it's going to open up a can of worms, but I think all the hard conversations need to happen now to help protect Texans. Yeah, I, com I completely agree. And so I do want to talk about a little bit, if you can, to the extent you can, the, the, uh, the, legal, the legal fights that, that CBS Energy is in, which, uh, which, have, which have been well covered. But mainly, mainly on two two fronts. One, do you see any compromise in sight? And and then two, like what are what are the non negotiables uh, from from your point of view? To the extent you can touch on that. Well, you know, look, some of the stuff I'm talking about, some of the issues that we have about price gouging, which I talk about frequently, um, we think that's a really key point. Look, I, you know, look, some of the, some of the people will say, well, you should just you know hedge your way out of it. Um, and we do, we have done some physical and financial hedges, but here's my point. It's not supposed to protect you from a violation against public policy to gouge people. And, um, and so in principle, that is what we're fighting. And we're fighting to make sure that the, what, be, what the behaviors were of just, you know, having no, no concerns about the, the people on the end of those bills, um, they get passed through to individual customers across our state We've got to fight for that because it can't be the default for Texas. We're, 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 too, we're too rich in natural resources. We're too smart. We're, our state is too good. People want to come here. And it, there's got to be a social equity thought about decisions yeah. made during, during crises. So that's a, that is the biggest principle that I think we're, we're fighting. And at, at the air cut level, it just trans, it transitioned to power prices can't be at the peak. And because even when that happened, it didn't again... It, it couldn't make you get out of an outage any faster just because somebody threw high prices at you. Um, there should have been a, just a requirement to perform the best you can in a crisis and think about again, let's not, let's not gouge customers in the process. That's the, that's the basis of our, of our activity, as well as a complete disregard for participants and customers, um, you know, protocols that didn't really work, approaches that didn't really work, decisions that didn't really think it all the way through. I mean, I get in the middle of a crisis, you're trying to do the best you can, but they were complete failures and those are the basis of why we're fighting. I will assure, I wanna assure everyone who's listening and, and um, being a part of this, this great, great conference that, that we're, I'm so excited again, the Z Prime for you doing this with us and being our long-term partner. 
CPS Energy is committed to doing whatever we can. Again, we don't want to start with litigation. We actually have started with um, reaching out to our counterparties, uh, telling them, you know, the, the, the you know, we, we, we want to come up with a better commercial solution. We have talked to elect, elected officials. We want, we want the regulations fixed as well. And so we're pursuing all of those things, but we also feel like in many, in many ways, if we have to, we have to be ready to let the courts look at the, the standard and expectation of business and help Texas resolve some of these more complicated things that haven't been able to be fixed and stabilized by legislation or regulation. And somebody asked me the other day, well, do you have a, a great chance and is it, is, it, um, is it worth it? I mean, I would tell you many, many things, including our nation was created on a dream that we wanted a better, a better life and we wanted better, a better circumstance. And we wanted, um, yes, we wanted freedom, but we wanted Americans to be treated fairly. That was a principled fight. And we right now have a principled fight to make sure that Texans treat other Texans well. And so, you know, that's, uh, you, please ask me what else what you'd like there, but that, that's the yeah. gist of it. Great, great, yeah, great perspective. And, and just to, you, my comment would be, yeah, any system that incentivizes bad actors, whether intentional or unintentional to capitalize is probably not a system that, that it, it's just bound to have more situations like that. And so uh, I think as with anything, at any time you could, you could take a lens and like, hey, is there a better way to do this? We, we should definitely do it. Um, so thank you for, for leading that. Um, just a quick note though, I think you've touched on this, uh, this concept of equity and and, and being have, really looking at that and making sure that that's applied equally to uh, to consumers and then energy as well. Uh, San Antonio, which has had a strong commitment to the community there, has has done a great job of that. Um, do you, uh, is that conversation also coming up more and more, especially in the context of storm when uh, you know, the people uh, communities of color traditionally across the across Texas were were hurt most by the storm. Do you, are you guys seeing that conversation come up being asked by stakeholders to consider that as you design, you know, what, what types of programs to put forward uh, after the Ab storm? Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it was already a growing um, focus area just by thinking about decarbonization and what it looks like when we're making and trying to find um, new ways to, to, again, reduce our emissions uh, across our fleet and, and our operations. So it was already important. But um, Storm Uri, uh, you know, created, I think, a, a special punctuation point. You know, a, a couple of things I would say is, and I, and I think it's right. I think we need to, to go back and anything that we can do that enhances um, social equity while we're doing what we're supposed to do and providing um, power that's affordable, uh, reliable, secure, safe, environmentally responsible and resilient, our, that's our balance. And we have to make sure that we do it and make sure that every single customer gets the best consideration. Uh, what I will say, you know, we also though have had people asking questions about, you know, the fairness of the outages and, and you know, was there some element of uh, people in different demographics uh, being affected more and was that deliberate? Well, the, the first thing I'm gonna tell you that there was no deliberate intention um, that for people to be affected one way or another. All we knew is that the size of the request for outages was five times more than what we had seen in 2011. And it's an imprecise science. It is, um, Mark, it's a circuit design across your entire city. The way you design your circuits, it, it, it's organic, meaning as developers are creating neighborhoods and the speed of which they're creating and the, and the ability for you to put in substations, transformers happens in that moment. And a lot of it's the infrastructure that we have is infrastructure that we've had for decades. And so we actually had bigger circuits and more outages on the north side and generally the more affluent part of town. The circuits are bigger and to meet the demand not to crash the grid. I mean, that, that's the other part that gets um, lost. I think every operator was doing what they could, making really tough decisions because we had a horrible, in some case, people had, were out for five days. And, and that was um, you know, tr tremendously 
um, terrible experience for them. But what I think every operator was also trying to do is make sure that the grid didn't go down for weeks or potentially for, for months. When, when, there's a, when there's a blackout in your entire grid, it just won't automatically come back up. There's a tremendous amount of work. And then you have to, re, just like you have to do, you want to do rolling outages, you have to think about how you bring up the grid a bit at a time after you handle actual equipment failures and other things. It's a terrible process. It's, it's worse than anything we saw during URI. So the outages were never intended to look at a particular customer or their demographic. And one other point I'll tell you, um, Jason, you know, we did get the request. Tell us what the outages were like by census track. Our system doesn't look at demographics. It doesn't look at census track. It doesn't look at um, economy, you know, your, your, what your economic level is or the color of your skin or who you marry or any of those things. It is looking at electrons. And I always say yeah. electrons and molecules love everyone. They want to, they want to permeate your system and they want to light up your home and energize your home. And so all that said though, we still have to answer questions. We still have to look at making improvements. We still need to have a more precise system to manage outages and our team, uh, we're, we're working on that right now. Yeah, yeah, great point. Yeah, you, that's funny, you, when, as you were talking that, that, that quote that you say, uh, came to my electrons that love everyone, but equally, you know, they don't discriminate, uh, especially in, 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 a, in a high end emergency where it, I think when anyone who's assessing that knows that everyone was doing everything in their, in their power possible uh, to prevent uh, going from what was already a tragedy to like a full blown Texas disaster um, uh, of proportions that I don't think any of us want to think of. So. Definitely great points. I do I do agree with you that that point is lost, but it's going back to how it's, it's very complicated to 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 get in there to, to the average consumer. But uh, I, I will say I give a lot of credit to our consumers out there and, and to uh, educators out there willing to uh, go out there and educate and and, and dispel some of the lots of the disinformation that was out there during the storm. Um, so you grew up in San Antonio. I, I love it when you hear like you, when I hear you say like you're, you're, you're puro San Antonio, right? It's, it's pretty awesome when I hear you say that. It also gives me great, great, uh, great hope that you're, you're going to lead the city and the inter and CPS energy in the right direction. So I wanted you to kind of conclude on what are those silver linings from the storm for CPS in the city of San Antonio? Um. I am also trying to pay attention a little bit to the chat, but um, oh, okay, I mean, look, sorry. I think, no, no, no. And, and, I, and I, I saw something out there that I want to utilize in the closing, but um, you know, I think, I think the, uh, the way that we look at things, the business is very complex and we're, you know, we're in generation, we're in the transmission business, um, the distribution business and, and caring for customers. And so we get to see a lot of aspects. We're in the retail business and we're in the wholesale business. So for us, you know, we, we are very familiar with, with all aspects of what, what happens. And when we're operating 24-7, 365, we get a lot of lemons. We get a lot of problems. Yuri was, you know, just a, a abyss, right, of, of lemons. But the point is to make lemonade. The point is to go and keep finding real solutions and making those improvements and trying to figure out what, you know, what thing can we do immediately? How can we improve communication? How can we explain to people what happened and be, be accountable and answer their questions? And again, take their suggestions because there's a lot of great suggestions. Um, I love the whole, um, uh, David DeVazio said equitable electrons. I think I got to put that together. So David, if you let me, if you let me um, uh, cop that one out of your, uh, your uh, mind there. I mean, I think that's right. And, and then add the additional dimensions that are important to, to, to human beings, to people, right? Um, we're talking about something technical. We're talking about providing energy, but equity does matter. And, and good decision makings to make smart decisions to make sure that we're using all the technology right and we're investing in the improvements in the technology. And I have to constantly give a shout out um, to the Epicenter and Kimberly Britton leaves that organization. They were our anchor and they, they continue to help us look at new projects and, and, and new things that are gonna help us do, do things on a small scale and then be able to take them to a scale across San Antonio. And that's how the technology solutions happen. And inside of that, I know that we're gonna have more 
more proposals about how to improve resiliency and reliability along the way. Um, so, and do it in a way that's responsible and do it in a way that's great for the environment and keeps business and lives going. Um, I always say technology needs to, to function in a way that people can live their lives uh, and make that the priority and not whether or not you, you, you know whether your power is gonna be delivered today. Um, we are the energy experts of the community, but our, our goal is to serve. Our, our assets are here so that we can provide the best service and for us to use um, our talents coupled with great, great community and customer input about how do we keep partnering to, to find those right solutions. So I want everyone to know you got 3,100 employees here at CPS Energy that are in for the long haul. Um, they, are, they are talented and they are passionate. They're your friends and your neighbors, they're Texans. And uh, we're gonna try to figure this out for San Antonio and all of Texas. Well, thank you, Paula. I think that wraps up our, our time. We could have kept, kept going on, uh, but we appreciate you coming on to kick off See the Future. We appreciate the partnership and we're looking forward to a great series. And thank you to you and the whole CPS Energy team for all the great work you're doing. Thank you. Thanks to Z Prime and all, and all your listeners. Hey, stay safe out there, everyone. We'll figure it out together. Thank you, Paula. See ya.